Hello, I'm Magdalene Rose, and this video is about the game Final Fantasy VII. If you clicked on this video, you may have a lot of strong feelings about FF7. You may even be writing about those strong feelings right now in the comments section. I see you in my analytics, Kyle. I know you're anxious, and I want to reassure you that I am a professional with approximately 4 million hours of FF7 under my belt, making everything I say in this video objectively correct and true, including the way I pronounce names and locations. Hi, it's Maggie. Okay, so uh, it turns out that finding footage of FF7 that is not in a format that's like 10 hours long is a little difficult, so I will be interspersing footage from the movie Final Fantasy Advent Children, which I like actually very much, but I know a lot of people don't, so um, if this bothers you, please let me know. Uh, feel free to send your complaints to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Comcast Cares. Uh, yeah, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience. All right, back to the video. Final Fantasy VII is an RPG released by Squaresoft in the mid-90s for the original PlayStation. It's one of the most popular games in the entire series and a masterpiece of anti-capitalist propaganda. What? Cloud Strife is an ex-soldier who joins a group of eco-terrorists called Avalanche to destroy a power plant run by an all-powerful corporate entity, Shinra Corp. Their plan flies wildly out of control and culminates in a race to save the planet from Shinra and a deranged mama's boy named Sephiroth. But this video isn't about Cloud, or Shinra, or Sephiroth. We meet Eris Gainsborough in an abandoned church and from there she joins your party as a healer. She's nice, a little flirtatious, and she says you remind her of her ex-boyfriend. She plays a huge role in the story and is at the center of one of the most famous scenes in video game history. Okay, the game is like 20 years old, so I mean, spoilers, but come on. Holy shit, is Final Fantasy VII really 22 years old? I'm... I'm gonna die! The death of Eris is one of those moments in video game history that everyone has a story about. The most stoic of gamers admit to crying when her low-poly remains sank to the bottom of the lake. But not me. I was happy. Because I hated Eris. Okay, so why did I hate Eris? The other main female lead to join the cast is Tifa Lockhart. Tifa is a tough, no-nonsense pugilist and a total badass. She also has a history with Cloud. So sort of. It's complicated, thus creating a love triangle between the three. This instantly caused a debate on the early internet. Tifa or Eris? Who is better? Who is more worthy of our love and admiration? And I was strictly in Camp Tifa. Yeah, that's right, for all gamers gave Twilight Nerd shit for their stupid Edward versus Jacob fights, the Tifa Eris Wars were unprecedented. <laughs> Sometimes I can still hear the screams of my comrades at night. But Maggie, how can you hate Eris? Aren't you a feminist and thus contractually obligated to love all female characters and everything? Well, yes, but I wasn't always the woke social justice. So social justice? Copyright it! Hashtag social justice! I grew up in the same sexist culture as everyone else. According to my calculations, I was 12 in 1997, and 12 is a difficult age to be a girl. I was transitioning from my beloved Sailor Moon magical girl, girl supporting girls for love and justice phase, to fuck women and everything we stand for for some reason. Also, I like Limp Biscuit now. The truth is, I had absolutely no reason to hate Eris. If anyone ever pressed me on this point, I would justify myself by saying I found her annoying. But what was annoying about her? Nothing. I disliked Eris because she was the most feminine, and I liked Tifa because she was more masculine. American culture will rarely come out and say explicitly that women are inferior, but it's heavily implied in almost all aspects of our lives. 
It's the background radiation that we grow up in and creates a phenomenon called internalized misogyny. Little girls are generally off the hook until we enter puberty, but after that, nearly every woman I know has a story of the moment they realize the world had started treating them differently. It often involves getting hit on by older men or being humiliated by boys at school. Regardless of how it happens, the message is clear. Girl bad. Be not girl. This obviously isn't a very healthy coping mechanism, but it is a great way to survive middle school. You know your friend who went through the big hoodie, I'm just one of the guys phase? Yeah, that's be not girl. Or she was just lucky enough to be a lesbian, in which case, mazel tov. This phenomena is at the heart of why so many young girls' friendships get shredded around this time. Because you have to choose. Stay in girl world and endure the pain, or defect to boy world and join in on the teasing. Which so many of us did. We all hated the prude, prissy girls while also simultaneously making fun of the sluts and the bimbos. I want to point out that at no point does the game imply that you're supposed to pit Tifa and Eris against each other in this way, save for a couple instances of, oh, I see you two are like, together. And then Cloud's like, no. Like, that's it! The Tifa Eris wars happen totally outside the game world, usually on anime forums, or in my case, oikaki boards. Don't judge me, you know who else drew on the Oikaki boards? Your precious ego raptor Aaron Hansen, Mr. 5 million subscribers. <sighs> what was I... Exhibit A, Yuffie Kisaragi. Yuffie is another popular female character in the game, even though she's an optional character you can only get if you go to Wutai Island. But Yuffie is mysteriously omitted from a lot of the ridicule and criticism despite being an objectively more annoying character. She steals your materia and forces you to fight through an entire section of the game without it. And if you're thinking that she gets a pass from a lot of the sexual ridicule because she's only 16, you have clearly not seen a lot of anime. But Yuffie is omitted from the Tifa Eris Wars because she's not part of the romantic subplot. Her character has no sexuality, so she's free to just be a character in the game. There's something about adding a sexual or romantic element to a female character that triggers this misogynistic response in both men and women. Because women sexing is bad, I guess. Exhibit 2, Jessie. Jessie shows up at the beginning of the game with the rest of Avalanche. People like her even though she plays such a bit role. There was even a poll on GameFAQs about whether or not she should be a dateable in the remake. Which is weird considering there's no real dating mechanic. I mean, you can go on a ride in Gold Saucer, but that's it. This isn't personal-level romance gameplay. Had she continued on as a possible romantic subplot for Cloud, the praise probably would have been mixed with over-sexualization and vicious hate. Exhibit... Uh, Lucretia is an interesting character because she actually has a romantic side, being both Sephiroth's mother and at one point in a love triangle with Professor Hojo and Vincent Valentine. Man, this is a real K-drama over here, damn. But even Lucretia gets a pass because she's a non-playable cave dweller you have no way of romancing. She's not a sexual option for the player, so she too is free to simply be in the game. Even though Eris isn't a real person, I feel bad about the way I treated her because it reflected a lot about how I felt about other girls and myself. Part of this is that black and white adolescent mindset, that feeling that you have to pick one or the other or, I don't know, all my teeth would fall out and I'd die. Like my best friend and I would have these endless arguments about Mortal Kombat, I know, shut up, who was better, Scorpion or Sub-Zero? And even though we disagreed, we never felt the need to be cruel or dislike the other character in the same way I hated Eris. Sub-Zero was better, by the way, just objectively. I guess what I'm hoping you take away from this is some self-reflection on characters you may have hated growing up. If you ever feel yourself reflexively hating a character in a story, ask yourself why and then stare into the abyss that is your infinitely imperfect identity and realize how problematic you are and then crumble under the weight of your own flaws. Bye!